For the past year and a half, the Democratic Republic of the Congo has been in a state of political unrest. The country's president, Joseph Kabila, has refused to give up power, despite term limits stipulated in the Constitution that meant he should have left office by the end of 2016. Protests have occurred nationwide since then. Journalists trying to cover the demonstrations have been arrested, threatened, and harassed by both the police and the intelligence service, while various media outlets have had the plugs pulled on their signals, their transmissions cut. However, journalists in the DRC face more than just threats and intimidation. 80% of Congolese media outlets are in the hands of, or controlled by, politicians. That means all kinds of stories of corruption, mismanagement, and human rights abuses go untold. And the DRC is not a small country. Geographically, it's the second biggest in Africa, and it has the fourth largest population on the continent. The Listening Post's Johanna Husnow on the state of journalism in the DRC and a media space in which information has become as splintered as politics. Depending on the channel Congolese viewers tune into to watch coverage of anti-government protests, they will come away with very different versions of the story. News outlets that fall in line with President Joseph Kabila call the demonstrations illegitimate. The de la tenté en vain d'organiser des marches prétendument pacifiques non autorisées. Opposition channels focus on what they call the government's use of excessive force on protesters. Eliezer Tambwe is a journalist at Tokoma Wapi, an online outlet that calls for Kabila's resignation. Fiston Kamanda works for state broadcaster RTNC. They offer conflicting narratives in a media landscape that is heavily politicized. Every journalist took their own position on the protests. The majority of coverage from outlets close to the government was poor. Each one hid the truth about what was really going on. Their reporters go out in police jeeps with armed soldiers. They're always focusing on the protesters. But do they ever show the force the police use? I was arrested by police. It was definitely because I was covering all of this. I was throwing accusations at the regime and they needed to silence me. No journalists have been arrested or imprisoned because of their work. Journalists are free to cover any demonstration. However, certain journalists took advantage and injected incendiary words. Some journalists even used these demonstrations to support the chaos in order to overthrow President Kabila. But at the state-run RTNC, we can't broadcast just anything. We follow editorial guidelines so that we show the country at its best and protect its interests. We must be patriotic at the same time as being journalists. Tout en étant journalist. It's understandable that Kamanda's work for the state-run RTNC is heavily politicized. What is harder to understand is how, according to Congolese press freedom organization, Journaliste en danger, 80% of the DRC's media outlets have ended up in the hands or under the control of politicians. To get the full picture, you have to rewind a couple of decades to when the DRC was known as Zaire a one-party state ruled by Mobutu Sese Seko for more than 30 years. Before 1990, there were only two or three media outlets, all of which acted as the government's megaphone. But since 1990, we've had a period of political openness and an explosion of media. Hundreds of radio stations, newspapers and TV channels were created. Every politician wanted their own media outlet, not to disseminate information, but rather for political propaganda. Congolese media is entirely owned by politicians. This is the undeniable truth. They intervene and define the editorial line. They force you to cover some topics and not others. For example, prioritizing the coverage of political meetings or the companies funding their activities, rather than everyday life. Freedom of the press is completely restricted there is no chance to be independent, and this creates big problems. 
We don't have the financial means to be independent, so every journalist is controlled by a politician. They try to befriend us, often bribing us with envelopes of money. You have to follow X in order to be able to get to Y and so on. And that is why journalists cannot deliver objective information. Of course, there are exceptions, but for the most part, people have to pick sides. Political financing and the corruption in brown envelope journalism that go hand in hand are hardly the only problems that media workers in the DRC face. Journalists who cast the government in a bad light through stories of mismanagement, corruption and the current political crisis face a threat of harassment, arrest and even murder. During these demonstrations, many journalists have been arrested, beaten up or had their material destroyed. It leads to self-censorship because journalists are afraid. It goes to show the government's desire to control the flow of information and essentially to stop journalists from doing their job of informing the people. There are consequences for the things that you say and the things that you don't say. As a media practitioner yourself, not only are you thinking about the larger society, but you are also thinking about your safety. That safety can come under threat because of government officials or because of militia, militants. So of course, there is always an issue, a level of self-censorship that goes on. I believe it's completely false to say that the government has tried in some way to muzzle journalists. Here in the Congo, journalists are free to carry out their work, which is not the case in neighboring countries. We at least have the freedom to criticize those in power without fear. That so-called freedom to criticize fails to explain the government's habits of cutting off all phone and internet services at times of heightened political tensions making it impossible for journalists to disseminate information. One station that had its transmission cut multiple times is Radio Okapi. Set up in 2002 by the United Nations and a Swiss NGO, Okapi broadcasts in several local languages and has become a significant source of news for Congolese audiences. UN-funded, the outlet is not tied to domestic political interest, granting its journalists a certain level of independence and credibility. Jennifer Bakodi, a former Radio Okapi journalist, remembers the early days. I arrived in the Congo in 2004, and what I saw were journalists who were properly salaried, who were independent, took the editorial line, being objective, uh, fact-based very seriously. Journalists were largely protected because they were working in the auspices of the United Nations. They were able to get to certain places to see firsthand uh, things that other media would struggle because they're, they're lacking the financial resources. Or if they're not lacking the financial resources, the money was made available because someone has an interest in those journalists covering the news in a certain way. But as the United Nations mission in the DRC operates on the invitation of the government, even radio or copy reporters are not immune to interference. We saw that they themselves too were under strain, increasingly even more so now, as the country becomes more and more politicized and the stakes become higher. When you talk about red line issues, it is true that even Radio Okapi is not in the business of doing investigative reporting. It is very hard to protect journalists in a situation where those in power are grossly unhappy with what is being said. Radio Okapi is under pressure because it lets all sides speak. We've often talked with them and they complain more and more about the increasing pressure from Congolese authorities, who even threaten to close them down if they don't respect their demands. In reality, we think this outlet is upsetting authorities because of its independence and professionalism. That independence is crucial. Habari RDC is a blogging conglomerate founded in 2016, mostly funded by the Dutch government, promising an independent alternative voice. The collective provides a platform for more than 100 bloggers in eight cities. But with just 6% internet penetration, the impact of these bloggers on Congolese, both inside and outside the city, remains low. Habari's director, Guy Muyembe, says that that is just one of the many challenges that remain before the media can play a central role in changing the course of the DRC's future.
Quelque chose doit changer à nous parce que... Something has to change in the mainstream media. Because although we now have the internet and young people use it like never before, radio remains the number one medium. Radio stations could be big players bringing about change if they were able to choose their own stories, independent of all political influences. I know it's very hard, there is so much pressure from all sides, but I think they still have a chance to make up for it.